to share my personal experience with you that I had in 1997 while obtaining information about the Roswell incident that changed my life and created an even stronger desire for me to obtain the truth. Some of us that are serious about ufology believe that this has been going on for thousands of years. As an example, some researchers say that there are many references in the Bible that can be interpreted as relating to ufology. One is the book of Ezekiel that talks about flying fiery wheels. What about the ancient civilizations and the technology they possessed, such as the Egyptians, the Mayans, and the Incas? We cannot today, with our modern technology, build anything as accurate as the Egyptian pyramids. Where did they get that technology, and what happened to it? Hello and welcome to the city of Presidio, where we're having our first Border Zone International UFO Festival. Presidio is uh, on the border on the Rio Grande where the Rio Conchos meet and uh, there's been human activity here since 1500 BC. We got the idea from a 1974 crash that happened about 40 miles from here. Mexico's Roswell went pretty much off the radar for about 30 years until 2007 when a book called Mexico's Roswell and the History Channel started covering this event. Uh, the city of Presidio is, uh, and Ojinaga, Mexico are probably the largest cities within the immediate reach of the crash site and uh, about 40 miles. So uh, in conjunction with the authors, we are proud to present the Border Zone International UFO Festival. So Brad calls us out of the blue, much like I first called Ruben, and he says, hey, would you guys be interested in doing some event to commemorate the 1974 Mexico's Roswell case, which happened here near Presidio. And I said, Brad, not only would we be interested, but we would jump at the chance because it so happened that the last time we came down here on a film, film shoot with the History Channel for the show UFO Hunters that Ruben and I did with them, we were in Presidio and we're just here in the area, just shooting the breeze one day, and I turned to Ruben and I said, wouldn't it be cool if someday our book would inspire a commemorative event such as a UFO conference here along the border? And it was in uh, September or in October. We, we're not sure because I didn't uh, make a note of it. And it was in uh, 1973, late October 1973, or in 1974, that's as close as I can get to it because we didn't make a note of it because we were very interested in it at the time, but we heard nothing about it afterwards. There was nothing, nobody said anything or nobody talked about it. The activity in Mexico is, is very abundant. It's, it never ceases. There's always new video coming out in different parts of Mexico coming out of uh, spheres exiting volcanoes, uh, volcanoes erupting or, or, or you know, having some trouble or, or trembling or having some tremors. And so they're trying to see if there's some kind of a, you know, a connection with the, uh, the OVNIs, what they call over there, and uh, Mount Popocatépetl, which is the uh, volcano in uh, Mexico City. I think when uh, Roswell happened 65 years ago, panic would have been a real possibility. Coming out of the Second World War, everything was going good, and then all of a sudden, we can't explain what crashed near Roswell. Today, I think that's altogether different. Young people grew up as Star Trek, Star Wars, The X-Files, and things like that. So young people today are much more susceptible to the idea of UFOs existing and being real. Uh, people are more educated today than they were 60 years ago. And it's been proven the more educated a person is, the more likely they are to believe that UFOs do exist. Now we're at the point where we recognize, gee whiz, we're not at the top of the heap. We're not at the center of the universe. We're, we better realize we're not the big shots we'd like to think we are. And there was a study done, the impact of contact with extraterrestrials by the Brookings Institute back in the think tank back in the 60s. They said so one of the groups that would be influenced most if we made contact with extraterrestrials was scientists because they'll lose their special status, their omnipotence. 
And there's some truth to that. Uh, I was very heartened when the Pope, uh, just a couple of years ago, said that uh, there was no reason why God who made us couldn't have made our brethren in outer space. And my first thought was, who's telling him stuff? <laughs> you know? Okay, if you'll give me your attention, the next 90 minutes is gonna be your time. You're gonna have an opportunity to discuss with our distinguished panel about UFO encounters that you may have had or ones that you have heard about and they will make remarks as well as listen to your stories. I want to introduce our distinguished panel right now.